Hi, my name is Kimberly Griffiths, and I'm Curator of Education at the Egerson Museum of Art. Welcome to Storytime at the Egerson. I'm so excited to have the chance to read a book to you. I chose this book today because this is a book from my childhood. I have a lot of fond memories and reading each night with my mom and dad. I held on to this book throughout the years and now enjoy reading it with my own kids. Um, I hope that you have someone that you can share reader with too. Um, the book I selected today is Cabs for Sale, a tale of a peddler, some monkeys, and their monkey business, told by, and illustrated by Esra Slobotkin. Now let's read. Once there was a peddler who sold cabs, but he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First he had on his own checked cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. He walked up and down the streets, holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. As he went along, he called caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street and he walked down the street calling caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap. But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody wanted even a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, said he. And he walked out of town slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his cap. He walked for a long time until he came to a great big tree. That's a nice place for a rest, thought he. And he sat down very slowly under the tree and leaned back little by little against the tree trunk so as not to disturb the caps on his head. Then he put up his hand to feel if they were straight. First his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps. Then the red caps on the very top. They were all there, so he went to sleep. He slept for a long time. When he woke up, he was refreshed and rested. But before standing up, he felt with his hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checked cap. He looked to the right of him, no caps. He looked to the left of him, no caps. He looked in back of him, no caps. He looked behind the tree, no caps. Then he looked up into the tree, and what do you think he saw? On every branch sat a monkey. On every monkey was a gray or a brown or a blue or a red cap. The peddler looked at the monkeys. The monkeys looked at the peddler. He didn't know what to do. Finally, he spoke to them. You monkeys, you, he said, shaking a finger at them. You give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. This made the peddler angry. So he shook both hands at them and said, you monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook both their hands back at him and said, tss. Now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot and he said, you monkeys, you, you better give me back my caps. But the monkeys only stamped their feet back at him and said, tss, tss, tss. By this time, the peddler was really angry, very angry. He stamped both his feet and shouted, you monkeys, you, you must give me back my caps. 
but the monkeys monkeys stamped both their feet back at him and said, At last, he became so angry that he pulled off his own cap, threw it on the ground, and began to walk away. But then, each monkey pulled off his cap. And all the gray caps, and all the brown caps, and all the blue caps, and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. So the peddler picked up his caps and put them back on his head, first his own checked cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, then the red caps on the very top. And slowly, slowly he walked back to town calling cats, cats for sale, 50 cents a cat. Well, I hope you enjoyed story time with me. Now I have an optional activity for you. Grab a piece of paper and something to draw with, anything, a marker, a pencil, crayons, and draw your favorite part of the story. And you can write something too. And then you can share it with somebody at home. Now, I hope you have the chance to visit the Everson Museum sometime in the future and see our incredible building and check out our, our classes and see the artwork and maybe take part in a free family day. You can find out more about the Everson Museum at www.everson.org. And thank you so much for joining to me today.